Tesla started offering a tow hitch for the Model 3 back in May of 2019, but in Europe only. Strange, but okay. And almost a year earlier, I had installed an aftermarket one on my Model 3 with my friend Zach from the Jerry Rig Everything YouTube channel. Now, from what I could find, these Model 3s with tow hitches haven't actually been delivered in Europe yet, but it seems like we might be getting closer. So I wanted to hook up something to my Model 3, tow it, and see what happened. Let's free the data. Before we get into the video, I wanna thank Trade Coffee for sponsoring this episode of the show. With Trade, you can discover new coffees from the nation's top roasters. Trade matches you to your own personal selection of coffee and conveniently delivers it direct to your door. It's pretty easy. You start out by taking a quiz and it kind of curates matches for you based on your level of experience and the way that you like to drink your coffee. Then they ship it direct to your door. You choose the delivery frequency and it appears on your doorstep fresh from the roaster. As you go on and drink the coffee, you come back to the website and you provide a rating and then that rating updates their algorithm to figure out exactly which coffee is the next one that you should try. I found my love for coffee at my first job where I learned to drink it black and really appreciate the quality and the difference in the roast. And so when Trade Coffee reached out and wanted to sponsor the show, I was really excited. And since working with them, I've really enjoyed drinking their coffee, all the different roasts that they send, just black out of a French press, which is how I do it. And the only way that works is if the quality of the beans is really, really high. So I can tell you from personal experience that this is good stuff. So if you struggle to find good high quality coffee and you want to give this a try, Trade Coffee is offering the first 100 people 30% off their very first bag of coffee and that also includes free shipping. So thanks to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this episode and let's hop into the video now. Using Teslab, I was able to see that my overall efficiency for my Model 3 is right around 78%, which translates to a watt hours per mile of 311. The way that works is in Tesla, we look at the rated range of so the battery says that you went 100 miles of range and then we calculate the actual distance you traveled. What is the ratio of those two things? So in this case, if the battery said that I spent 100 miles of range from the battery, but I only traveled 78, that would give me that 78% efficiency. So this varies by person on your driving style, where you live, and even by time of year. But overall for me, that means we're looking at just over 78% efficiency or 311 watt hours per mile. That means that on average, given my top range in my Model 3 of 325 miles, I would be getting about 253 miles of actual real world distance. Now that's overall, so not every trip, right? So some trips are gonna be much worse than that and some of them are gonna be much better, but on average, that's what I'm looking at for real world range. Now I've also taken my Model 3 out and driven it until it stopped, until it could go no more. And the average distance I got between those two times I did that was 262 miles. So not too far from that 78% or 253 mile range that that efficiency rating gives me. So I have a fair amount of data here and a good understanding of what this car can do when it's not towing stuff. So what happens when I do tow something? Well, I went up to my friends at EV West here in San Diego and I borrowed slash stole their EV camper trailer for a day. The trailer might look familiar to you World War II veterans watching because it is actually converted from an old work truck or maybe a Jeep used during the war. And the trailer itself weighs about 550 pounds. On top of that is this fold out tent mounted on a rack and in total that weighs about an additional 200 pounds, giving it a total weight of around 750 pounds. So with this 750 pound trailer hooked up to my Model 3, I headed for the hills. I went from the shop up to the 78 freeway and then headed west. I drove on the freeway for about 10 miles and then turned around and came back down to the shop. And in total, I drove 26.7 miles and I used 12 kilowatt hours of energy, giving me a watt hours per mile of 448. Of course, I had to do a control for this and on that same route without anything being pulled, I got 320 watt hours per mile. So towing around 750 pounds in my Model 3 hurt my range by almost 40%. 
That means that my efficiency for this trip was right around 49% overall, which if you multiply that by my rated range of 325 miles, means that with this trailer, I could realistically tow for almost 160 miles. I've got 159.25 miles. Now this poses a challenge. Considering some superchargers are pretty far away from each other, but I could easily make it out to the desert near San Diego and back without any worry at all. And rewind back in the beginning, I mentioned that they offered this in Europe and it might be confusing as to why that is, but in a lot of European countries, owning a truck is not something people really do. And so what they have instead are these trailers that you can pull. So if you go to Ikea, you need to pick up some furniture or whatever the case may be, it's easy to just go rent a trailer and and pull something around. For some reason, this happens in Norway more often than, than anywhere else. So looking at that use case of say going to Ikea and back and towing something in your Model 3, the chances are you're not gonna be driving more than 70 miles each way. And if you are, you're still in an area where there are likely going to be chargers. Now, of course, that's not true universally, but I would venture a guess that majority of time, you're not gonna have to worry about getting stranded out in the middle of the desert as if you were going camping in the Southwest United States. So I think, adding a tow hitch to a Model 3 is a pretty useful thing. And for the use case that I mentioned here, camping with your family out in the southwestern United States where I live, it's still totally fine. The campgrounds that me and my family go to are about 40 miles each way, so 80 miles in total. That's still only half the range that I would get towing the 750 pound trailer. And that's kind of a lot of stuff. I don't really need all that if I'm going camping. And to be honest, if I still had my Model S, I could just sleep inside of the Model S, which is amazing where you get to kind of sleep under the stars and see everything with the climate controls. But I think that it's very useful and still something totally valid to add a tow hitch to a Model 3, whether that's from Tesla and you're able to purchase it like you're in Europe, or if you have to buy one of those aftermarket ones like I did here. I'll put a link to that in the description if you wanna check it out as well. But what if towing isn't just a casual thing you might need once in a while? What if you really need to do this and it's something that's a you know key part of your life or something you do often? Well, you can buy a Tesla Model X, which has a tow package and just tow a ton of stuff with that. But how does that work? Well, my friend Tony Williams over at QC Charge did just that recently. Now, Tony likes to take his electric dirt bikes out to the dunes and ride around and just have a blast out there. Where we live in San Diego, uh, on the way to Arizona, there's kind of these big popular areas where people do these kind of things. They have the sand buggies and all that kind of stuff. It's a really good time if you've never been. And so Tony bought a brand new Tesla Model X and hooked up his trailer, which was right around 3,000 pounds, and set off on a trip to Arizona with him. And just reading the text from him, you can tell it was a pretty frustrating experience. He said that he got nearly triple the energy pull than he normally does. So it was about 850 watt hours per mile, uh, 1.2 miles per kilowatt hour. And that was going 65 miles per hour on the freeway where the EPA rated range is right around 300 watt hours per mile. But looking at the data through Tesla, we can see that most people driving Model Xs get it right around 400, maybe 415 or so. And so his initial planning, he was looking at 600 watt hours per mile, thinking double of what the rate was, but it was a lot more than that. So this actually messed him up quite a bit. So in doing his planning for it, he wasn't sure what to calculate and the car itself did not account for the trailer, meaning that as he was going, it would think, oh, you have enough range to get to the supercharger, but you don't because it didn't count for the 3,000 pound trailer, nor the, the change to the aerodynamics of the whole thing and all that. So he said it was really difficult. And then when he got to these places to charge the superchargers, he would have to unhook his trailer and then go plug in. Now, he uh, admittedly, you know, didn't do that at all of them where he had to pull in with his trailer and block a bunch of them, but he made sure no one else was there. But point being, even if your car did have a ton of energy and you're going on these trips, you're still going to have to unhook your trailer every time you go to stop at a supercharger, making it an extra inconvenience. And because the range on his was, you know, almost a third of what it should be, he had to stop a lot more often than he initially planned on doing. 
So towing long distances in an EV is still a challenge, even with the supercharger network and the latest and greatest from Tesla that offers this towing capability. But when you think about the Model 3 use case, it's a bit different, right? You're most likely gonna be pulling in your bikes or maybe uh, putting on some skis or snowboard on the back with something that isn't even a trailer. It's just like one of those little hitch mounted uh, bike racks. Uh, or if you are towing a trailer, it's probably gonna be a smaller kind of thing. Of course, the car has a lot of power and can pull things, but that's not really the point because if you are going a long distance, you're gonna really uh, suffer in terms of the range there. So it's something to consider. I still think that it's really cool that you can buy this thing for a few hundred dollars and you know enhance or add functionality to uh, your car, which is always a good thing. So I think it's worth it if you, you know have a Model 3 and you wanna take your bike somewhere and you don't really need to tow things long distances, that is still kind of a challenge. But but you do need some added functionality for you know an afternoon's worth of work and a few hundred dollars. I think it's a pretty good addition to the Model 3. So what do you guys think? Would you do this? I mean, you are having to pull off the bumper and cut into it and pull off some parts and mount things. I mean, all it really is is you know taking off some screws and putting some stuff on. It's really not that crazy. Uh, you're not cutting into any wires or anything you know crazy like that. So I mean, would you do it? I want to know. Leave me a comment. I mean, me and Zach did it, and he, in his confidence, definitely gave me a boost uh, in, in, in my willingness to do it. But in the end, I mean, we haven't had any problems with it. And so I think it's a really cool addition and something that's a bit unique. So let me know in the comments down below what you think you'd do. And lastly, don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back in the next one.